former congressional candidate in Ohio. Uh, good to see you both. Thanks both for being here. Good so, ben, here. let me speak with you uh, first about this issue. Um, I kept thinking that the big story today was going to be that Mike Pence's book was going to drop. <laughs> Do you think yeah. that Donald Trump purposely picked today because he knew that was going to happen? Do you think it's a quinky dink? No, I think Donald Trump saw what was going on in the midterm elections and he wanted to immediately turn the page. And he wanted to be the first one to get out there and say, I'm running for president and basically dare anyone to challenge him. I think it's obviously extremely early for him to do this. There are a lot of people around him that wanted him to wait until after we saw what happened in Georgia with the Herschel Walker uh, Warnock runoff there. Uh, but he felt like for him to basically say, I am the leader of the Republican Party, he who goes first is the heir apparent, is the king, and he was going to be first no matter what. I don't think it had anything to do with the book at all. So, um, Morgan, do you think Democrats are licking their chops um, at this announcement tonight, thinking, terrific, we can beat him. We did it before. We'll do it again. He's just had a drubbing through the midterms. We see that polls are showing DeSantis is, you know, a, a strong candidate, even at this early stage. And if you answer yes, could you also please tell me if you think the Democrats are going to fund uh, his primary? <laughs> well, Look, it, it benefits Democrats to have the Republican Party in chaos and so much confusion around who's leading the party, what the different messages are coming from uh, their different leaders. And that is true. But it's also true that we can't count on what is happening on that side. We need to continue to focus on developing a good strategy for Democrats. I don't think that it's a good strategy to have this defensive position of investing and in, in making gambles on Republican primaries. I think we focus on who's our person, what's the message, and make sure that we have as many ambassadors as possible throughout the country who are going to share that message and generate turnout in our base. Okay, so Ben, um, I know somebody who generates a lot of energy and lots of TV coverage. It's a lady named yeah. Carrie Lake, who now has lots of time on her hands, having lost the yeah. governor's race in Arizona. She's also a huge fan of Donald Trump and vice versa. She was his candidate. Um, but he didn't like losers, right? He always says, I don't like losers. But I wonder if he would make a concession this time around. Could you see a Carrie Lake um, vice presidential piece of that ticket? Yeah, absolutely. I think he's obviously going to look at a woman. Uh, everybody I've talked to in, in his universe has said that he's looking at a woman. I think that's part of the reason why you have Mike Pence now trying to clear the air and, and write this book and make headlines uh, and do all these sit down interviews uh, and try to put himself in a position to run for president. I, I'll say it here and I'll say it early. There is no chance in hell that Mike Pence wins the nomination for the Republican Party. Uh, I just want to be very clear about that. So enjoy the book tour and, and the, you know, I'm your own man now. The reason why he's doing it is because he knew he wasn't going to get picked again. And I think Donald Trump understands he needs to pick somebody that's a fighter. I think he wants to pick someone that's a woman. Uh, at least initially, I think that's what he's probably looking at. Is she got to be on that short list? Yes. Uh, do I think the two of them together would be dynamic? Yes. And I also think one of the things that Donald Trump would like to have is somebody that can go out and campaign and get big crowds. That is something that I think Carly Lake could do. That's something that Mike Pence never did. Uh, it was the Trump show always. And I think Donald Trump understands how valuable it is to have a running mate that can fill a place up and be a big draw. And she certainly is on that list. She reminds me of Sarah Palin, the energy. And P.S., you know, Sarah Palin was also a TV news anchor and reporter beforehand, too. And boy, could she get the crowds out there. She was like a Mick Jagger of politics. You know, yeah. she was something else. She, look, back so, in the day, she was huge. And people forget that now, right? Because she lost this time around. Everybody has their moment. Everybody has their, their opportunity, mm -hmm. I think, in politics. And, and if you're Carly Lake, this is your opportunity. The same way with Ron DeSantis. If you're Ron DeSantis right now, can you really wait another four years with your star shining as bright as it is right now? I'm sure his political advisor is saying this is your moment, this is your opportunity as well. But every time we get into these cycles, the, the, the person that's just, you know, cranking it out uh, at the beginning ends up, you know, in the toilet like f five, six months well, later. Right. Boy, we've seen that happen. So, Morgan, uh, let me ask you this. The, the, I was so stunned to see that article today about Rupert Murdoch reportedly telling Donald Trump, I'm not 
backing you. And not only am I not backing you, I am going to back a Democrat over you. How, did, how do you think Democrats take that news? Again, a very good sign. And chaos in the Republican Party is a win for us. And even if Donald Trump is able to get people to turn out for this announcement tonight, even if you know he has a running mate like Carrie Lake, who's good on TV, nothing is a guarantee based on the results that we saw in these midterm elections just over the past week. And leaders and funders of the Republican Party know that, which is why they are going to do whatever they can to make sure that he is not the nominee. But good luck. They are not in control of their party. And the more chaos that happens, the more that Trump is out there, that is a very easy specter for us as Democrats to use to motivate people to turn out and support the Democratic nominee. Now, I got to say this, Ashley. I don't think the Republican Party is in chaos right now. I think you have, uh, and it's okay to have more than one leader of a party at this moment in time when you're not in the White House. That's really normal. If that's the new definition of chaos, it makes me laugh. Uh, if, if there's any chaos right now, it's do you stick with Joe Biden after you just lost the House? I mean, it, it's, it is, uh, you always have a big primary when you're not in the White House, right? When, it, when it's not the president running, yes, it's a former president, but this is not chaos. Gotta leave Let's it there. be clear. It's normal. I got to leave it there. Uh, you guys, thank you. I'm just uh, flat out Thanks. of time, but good, good conversation. And it isn't our last because, hey, you know, the presidential election season just started tonight. Ben Ferguson, Morgan Harp, thanks so much for being on tonight. Thanks. Thanks for having me. And that is it for me tonight. But uh, please stay tuned because after the break, if you missed it, Trump's big announcement um, and a special encore presentation of our special coverage with Chris Cuomo is coming up in just a few seconds. So have a good night. Pop the popcorn, 